Hello, my friends. Welcome back to my channel, Diamonds and Washi. This is Katie, and if you're new here, hi, welcome. I hope you'll consider subscribing to my channel. And if you are back, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're back. Tonight, we are going to be sitting down and doing a little whip and chat together. And if you're not familiar with what that means, whip stands for work in progress. And chat means, of course, that we're just going to chat and catch up a little bit. So feel free to pull out whatever project, if you have a project you're working on, diamond painting or otherwise. Um, I know I sometimes put on whip and chats when I'm doing housework or even if I'm putting you to sleep, I hear that I have a somewhat soothing voice. My kids would disagree with you, but um, you guys get the customer service voice, <laughs> as I call it. So let me give you a really, really quick rundown of the stats for tonight. I am working on the kit library version A from DIY Moon Shop. It is legally licensed from the artist Cheriuki, one of my personal favorite artists by far. Um, I am using this pen from Jim's Handmade Pen Shop, which should be reopening soon hint hint um this one does have one of the everlasting single tips in it and i wanted to use it kind of mainly for that reason because i haven't used one of my pens with um, one of these tips in before and if you aren't familiar with everlasting tips these are a stainless steel tip that's made by actually a gal in australia um, and unlike the standard brass tips that come in pens they won't warp or scuff up or burr or anything like that so um and then i have just a regular skinny multi-placer in the end i was feeling in a rose gold mood so tonight i'm using a tray from bella art de nicole this is the rose gold tray obviously one of my favorites and we're sticking with an old reliable wax tonight this is not your mama's mud in plain jane which is vanilla <laughs> so let me go ahead and pull back this section which i did get a little bit of a head start on earlier and let's chat. So how are you doing tonight? I hope you're doing very well and that your Monday is off to a good start. By the time this goes up, it will be Monday. <laughs> I sort of have settled into a bit of a rhythm as far as my whip and chats go where I record on Saturday or Sunday night and have them go live on Monday morning. It works for me. <laughs> so I do have kind of a lot in the way of some just like announcements so i'll try to get those in here up front uh, in case you have to duck out and don't find your way back <laughs> uh so first thing i have decided to go ahead and do my very first youtube live and it is going to take place tomorrow by the, time, by the time this video goes live. It'll be Monday. And I know it's kind of a short notice, short turnaround, but I've noticed that not a lot of other creators seem to go, at least not the ones that I follow. I'm sure there are plenty that I am unaware of. I'm not trying to step on any toes whatsoever, but I noticed that not a lot of creators seem to go live earlier in the week. And I didn't want to try to do a weekend for the moment because I didn't want to step on any toes. I know there's a lot of creators that'll go live on the weekend. I watch a lot of them. <laughs> so I thought, okay, I'll do a Tuesday, I'll do Tuesday evening and I'm doing it soon because otherwise I might chicken out. <laughs> so um, I'm going to add an announcement to the community tab, which that's fun to have access to now. Um, with the info so you don't have to memorize it right now i also i believe that i can actually go in and schedule it can you tell i'm new to this please be gracious with me <laughs> so i will schedule it um and the best way that you can stay up to date with when i'm going live is if you turn on notifications for my channel so next to the subscribe button under you know any video or um on my channel homepage, there should be a bell and if you click on the bell it'll let you customize what kind of notifications you want to get if any and if you click if you turn on notifications that should keep you posted on when i'm going live 
It'll also automatically put it in your time zone, which I hope will be really helpful for my international subscribers, though I know that this time is probably not going to work for a lot of you. I am planning to go live at, I believe, 6.30 p.m. Pacific, Pacific Standard Time on Tuesday. So um, if you want to do the quick math on that, just go to you know Google and type in what is 6.30 PST in whatever your time zone is. <laughs> and I am guessing it will go around maybe an hour. You will absolutely hear my kids because I'm doing this while my, my kids are awake and my husband will very sweetly be hanging out with them. But inevitably, because I live in a small space, you'll hear them. <laughs> Lots of tiny human noises. Um, but hopefully it'll just be a casual way to hang out. It'll probably just kind of be whip and chat style. But I'm really, really looking forward to getting that interactive um, time with you guys where, where I'll be keeping an eye on the chat and um, just getting to actually chat back and forth instead of just talking to myself for an hour like I'm doing now. <laughs> so I really, really hope you can make it. Even if you can only stop in for a minute and say hello, that would absolutely make my day. So yeah, we'll see how it goes. It's going to be really chill and um, hopefully just a little something different to try together and, and chat. So there, there is that. Also, I really, really would love to hear your feedback on an event slash collaboration that I may or may not have in the works with a fellow creator. I am so excited because we have been brainstorming on and off on this for really like the better part of two, about two months now. And we just keep kind of mulling it over and then coming back to each other and saying, what about this? What do you think about this? I have never hosted an event before and I've never been a part of a collaboration with another creator. Um, so this is new territory for me, though not for her. <laughs> um, I know like every day I swear someone is announcing a new event, but I, and I've shared my thoughts on that before, that I have some mixed feelings on that. Um, now I'm at a point where I feel like, well, no, like whoever wants to host an event should host an event. And it, it just enables people to hopefully find something like a particular event that really speaks to them. So here's where I'm ready to hear some of your guys' thoughts. We are kicking around the idea of doing an event that centers around the fine arts slash customs, maybe highlighting like the old masters in, in artwork, uh, maybe also talking about like copyright free, like modern art as well. Uh, so let me explain <laughs> um, the context. So we were chatting and we were thinking like, what's something that no one else has really done before? Something that might be helpful to the community? Because for both of us, we're both very passionate about with diamond painting only using legally licensed artwork and not supporting companies that steal from artists. That's a huge priority for both of us with our channels. And along with that, we both love the chance to teach, I guess for lack of a better word. We both tend to have minds that are geared towards teaching, like sharing information that you know we've researched and compiled that hopefully makes things more accessible and um, understandable for people. Um, so that's what we thought, you know, it seems like it's very possible that I know, at least for me, speaking for myself, I have not really gotten into the world of ordering customs because 
I just feel like it's so complicated and I'm, I don't really know how to go about doing it in such a way that ensures that I'm not accidentally using stolen artwork. So here's what we're debating and what I'm kind of looking for your thoughts on. So would, would you guys enjoy an event that would kind of center around fine art where we're talking about we're talking about artwork that was produced before I believe 1925 is the cutoff um, for most artwork that's generalized I don't have all of the full information on this but we're we're talking about um, artwork that's considered part of the public domain so for example like Van Gogh's Starry Night is part of the public domain you don't you aren't paying royalties to him or his estate or anything like that it's considered copyright free that's why you see starry night and variations on star starry night everywhere um and if if you're curious by the way i was just looking at the heaven and earth designs website they do cross stitch patterns and just started doing pre-printed diamond painting canvases but if you go over there and look in their cross stitch chart section by artists and go under the category art of the antiquities i believe is what it's called you'll see this artwork that we're talking about you know i'll actually i'll link it below in the description if you want to click over there and see it so I know that this style of artwork is not everyone's cup of tea, and that's completely fine. But when she asked about it on her channel, there was such a positive response in the comments that even surprised me where I was like, oh, yeah, this, is, this may be a very niche thing, but it's never been really done before. So maybe this would be a really interesting thing to do and to offer insight and sort of teaching on here's how you could go about if you wanted to be able to look at more artwork than what diamond painting companies are offering as prepackaged kits. Here's a whole bunch of resources for places you can go to find royalty free, like public domain artwork. Right now I'm kind of debating like, do we want to really keep the focus on like the fine arts and the old masters? Or do we also want to go ahead and include artwork that's been done since 1925, like some of the artwork that you can just get on like Shutterstock and purchase a license for and what that looks like or purely like non-copyrighted artwork that isn't necessarily fine art, but is still something you could make into a custom. So... I hope that that made sense, but please let me know in the comments if you would be interested in something like that, whether it's specifically on the fine arts and the old masters or a little bit more on just customs in general. In my head, I'm envisioning this to be largely like a teaching series, but that also maybe leads up to an event where if you wanna join us, like you can order a custom and then we can have an event, you know, starting a month or two later or something like that. I don't know. We're still in the early brainstorming phases, but would love to hear your thoughts. And let me know if you have questions about that in the comments too, if I can explain that a little bit better. So let me grab another color. This piece is fairly heavy on the confetti, but... I don't mind it one single bit because it's so peaceful and serene to work on. Um, I am so thoroughly enjoying it and I really enjoy how after I work on a section, when I step back, it just reveals these beautiful, beautiful details. I really, really love it. <laughs> I, um, I know some of you may be wondering like, wait, Last week in your whip and chat, didn't you say something about how you were going to start on a different project? Uh, yes, and I did, and I had to stop. <laughs> so I kitted up Dreams of Elysium from Dreamer Designs, and after half an hour of actually working on the canvas, 
my nose was super itchy, my eyes were watery and itchy, and I was like, this is super weird. Like, maybe there's just something in the air or something just triggered my allergies. I don't know what's happening. But I thought, I feel like maybe it's related to this canvas somehow. So I covered up the canvas, put it away. Um, I ended up having to take like a Benadryl because I couldn't get my allergy symptoms to like settle back down, even though I had packed the canvas away. So I took a Benadryl and apparently the one we have was non-drowsy because <laughs> I was so tired like the whole next day. Um, so then the next day I like confirmed, I'm like, okay, I'm completely symptom free. Like everything is fine. So let me try this again. And I pulled out the canvas, took off the cover, started working on it. Within five minutes, had an itchy nose and watery eyes again. So I thought, I don't know what it is, but I can't work on this canvas, <laughs> which is a huge, huge bummer. Um, it's one of the canvases that I ordered last summer, maybe fall. It was early. I had it was the first Dreamer Designs version 2 kit that I had ordered and it was right when they had restocked. I want to say in July. So, I did go ahead and I packed it up and it's going to go to my friend <laughs> my friend Jacqueline's stash and hopefully she won't have a, an allergic reaction to it. But she said she'd enjoy working on it. I was like, "Well, you can have it because I can't I can't work on it." Um, I have two other kits from them that I had ordered on Black Friday, and maybe after I finish this one, which this one is kind of large, I'll be on it for a little while, um, maybe I'll try one of those other Dreamer Designs kits, and I'll just really hope that it was a fluke. I really, really hope it was a fluke. I did go and poke around in like the the dreamer designs facebook group and like crafters anonymous and stuff just to see if anyone had ever mentioned having a similar kind of allergic reaction and the most that i found was there were some people that had like a contact reaction to the adhesive but that's not what i had had and that wasn't even specific to dreamer designs that was just in general some people have sensitive skin and it reacted to the glue on the canvas but this was so strange and I thought if it's affecting my nose and eyes is there like something that's um like coming off the canvas like what's the word Not emanating I know you're shouting it at me <laughs> but is there something like a vapor coming off the canvas or something so I don't know I might shoot shoot dreamer designs an email just to let them know but I don't I mean I, I don't know. It's a kit from last summer. I'm not sure if they'll really be able to do anything, but I guess I at least want to give them a heads up just in case other people have mentioned similar issues and then they'll, you know, then they'll know if there's some kind of pattern. But yeah, like I said, hopefully it was just a fluke. I have another canvas or two in my stash from them that I will definitely still give a try. But no, I'm loving, I'm loving this one. I submitted a couple of pieces of art to DIY Moonshop, which by the way, that's a thing you can you can do. You can actually, they have a Google form on their website where you can submit artwork um, to request that they uh, chart it for a diamond painting. And I, I don't know if they necessarily like say yes to, <laughs> I'm sure they don't say yes to every request, but there were a couple of pieces that Cheriyuki and Margaret Morales had released recently and I thought these would be so gorgeous as diamond paintings. I'm gonna submit it just just in case because <laughs> oh my gosh they'd be beautiful. There was um, Margaret Morales just around Valent a little after Valentine's Day she f said she finished it a little late has a gorgeous absolutely gorgeous piece of her take on Persephone and Hades. It is beautiful and if it comes out in a diamond painting I will not be able to click add to cart fast enough <laughs> so um any other any other fans of Margaret Morales or Cheriyuki they're my they're my two very very favorites from DIY Moonshop um I was also thinking about my mind has been going on 
affiliate programs. After after listening to Jessica over at Tiny Worlds of Wonder, which if you don't follow her already, you absolutely should. She has been one of my very, very favorite creators since the time that I first started dipping my toes into the diamond painting YouTube scene, which I didn't really do much in the, in the way of YouTube at all until I started diamond painting. Anyway, I just click super well with her personality. I love her approach to just having a channel. She has so much integrity. She's um, really sweet and I just, I love listening to her. I love watching her do her reviews and thoughts on things because she's so intentional and so genuine. So um, I'll link her below and I'll also, <laughs> if I have time to edit tonight, I'll link to the whip and chat I'm referencing up in the eye. It's the one she just posted yesterday. Um, and I mean, I suppose free hint here, <laughs> if you go and listen to that, you're going to hear more than one similarity and realize who the other super secret creator is that I might be doing an event with, but <laughs> anyway, um, so she was chatting a little bit in her whip and chat about affiliate programs and kind of the effect that they can have on um, communities and relationships. And I felt like I was resonating so strongly with so much of what she was sharing about. I think there are, you know, right and wrong ways to do affiliate programs. And I think it also is complicated. <laughs> so this is something I'll be really curious to hear your thoughts on as well, because there was a really um, good discussion going on in the comments section of her video as well. But it's interesting. I feel like I tend to see a couple of different kind of approaches to affiliate programs where, so for example, the only company that I am affiliated with at the time of this filming is Diamond Art Club. Um, I suppose I'm also technically, yeah, I'm affiliated with Amazon through their um, influencer program, but that's like 100% hands off. Um, the Diamond Art Club affiliate program is very, it just is very low key, I suppose, almost casual. Like there's no, there's no like super secret table where all the Diamond Art Club affiliates hang out. Um, and there's no, like we're not given scripts or told like, what to post or what to say. And there's nothing about like, well, you can't talk about other companies. Like there's there's none of that. It's purely, you apply, if you get accepted, here's your discount code that you can share as you will. Um, and then that's it. <laughs> Contact them if you have questions or problems. Um, and then I think, I don't know from personal experience really because I'm not a part of other affiliate programs, but just from my sort of outsider's perspective, or as, a, as your sort of average Joe member of the diamond painting community, there are other affiliate programs that seem to run very differently. And the way, not that I'm trying to like steal all of Jessica's terms and the way that she referred to it, but I think she nailed it. She hit the nail on the head when she said, that she feels like sometimes affiliate programs can produce like a tribal mentality where it's it's all about this company and only this company and nothing good to say about other companies and nothing bad to say about the company that you are an affiliate for um and i don't i don't know how helpful that is for a community because I have seen, I have seen firsthand how from the outside noticing what seems like some disingenuous behavior from a company's affiliate program or affiliates, how that, ha when someone has called that out as a way to sympathize with someone else, um, the person that 
pointed out this disingenuous behavior, behavior was flamed <laughs> and um, it like ruined friendships. And like that, I feel like is when you get to a point of, well, then this is not like a, a good thing for a community. Um, and I mean, we are all human. We are not perfect. <laughs> you know, people are going to make mistakes. Companies, especially like small businesses, will make mistakes and there are growing pains. I completely get that. But I think there's, I think you just sort of have to be really cautious and aware if you go into um, an affiliate program. And I don't know, I'm very intentional about even just what I want to unbox on my channel. I've gotten any number of emails from companies that will ask if they can send me something like, basically like a PR package or something in exchange for a review. And I haven't yet been at a point where any of those companies I've really wanted to do that for, mostly because most of the companies that are doing that, at least for like the point that I'm at with my audience <laughs> and numbers, I suppose, like most of these companies have a lot of stolen artwork on their shops. And I just, I don't want to show their content on my channel as though I'm endorsing that. And I don't feel like I, I didn't make a channel to like try to get free stuff. <laughs> that's genuinely, that's not why I'm here. Um, of course, let's be honest. If Diamond Art Club emailed me, I was like, hey, can we send you a thing for free? I'd be like, yes. <laughs> you know? But that's, you know, that's again, not why I'm doing it. And I don't, that's not going to happen. <laughs> so um, anyway, it's, it's kind of murky waters, right? Between um, if you're going to do the affiliate thing or the, you know, free PR pack thing. But yeah, I would be curious to hear what your thoughts are if you feel like um, affiliate programs are great and there's no problem with them, or if you're feeling kind of uncertain, if you've, you know, been burned by them before yourself, or I know for some people they have been a part of an affiliate program, like, and then just suddenly one day you see that person is no longer a part of that. And here's the thing to keep in mind, I think, when it comes to integrity, when it comes to the integrity of a company or a person and a person's character, time is always going to tell. <laughs> um, so for like my friend who had, you know, really been burned by pointing out a company's kind of head tilt <laughs> uh, practices, one of the things that I tried to reassure her with is I was like, time, like, time is always going to tell. <laughs> like, give it time and you'll see. And sure enough, that is what has happened. But I really, really try to give people the benefit of the doubt, and I'm never going to be the one that's like, I told you so, <laughs> um, or anything like that. I, uh, I just wonder if there's a better balance that can be found. I understand that the diamond painting industry, I suppose, for lack of a better term, between companies seems like it's really, really competitive and almost cutthroat with some companies, but I don't think it has to be. I don't think it has to be only one diamond painting company that's out there because here's the thing. I love different diamond painting companies for different reasons. And there are some diamond painting companies that I have no personal problem with, but I you just don't see them much on my channel because the particular artwork 
um, that they carry just might not speak to me. And that's, that's okay because it's speaking to someone else. So different diamond painting companies can definitely just have different audiences and like serve different parts of the community so that there's, there's something for everyone. And that's, that's the approach that I like and that I wish that more companies and more people would have because I see a really similar vibe even in the um, you might be able to hear my neighbor's dog sorry about that I definitely have noticed a similar vibe with which I've mentioned before I know <laughs> uh, even in like the YouTube community where it's it's a lot of people like tearing each other down to try to build themselves up and that's like that's not that's not productive or kind to anyone so maybe i live in a fantasy world <laughs> i'm like i just want us all to be friends like that chicken mean girls um like i just want us all to be friends like <laughs> do you even go here she doesn't even go here okay um but no, I feel like I just wish that there was all around just a more collaborative attitude where we're building one another up and acknowledging that there's room for all of us at the table. Okay, I got super preachy there and I'm sorry about that. <laughs> I have apparently a lot of thoughts and a lot of feelings about things like affiliate programs and community. Here's the takeaway. I am curious to know if you have noticed similar things about different affiliate programs and please don't name names. We don't, we don't need to do that, of course. Um, and just what your experience with them has been and if you feel like it's good for the community, detrimental, what have you. Okay, let's talk more about other things <laughs> okay so as i was opening my water bottle it was reminding me i was going to tell you guys <laughs> i definitely think that i'm going to end up having to go back to the hand doctor because it's like really really hurting whenever i have to like grip really hard with this finger like opening a water bottle and if you're new and you don't know what i'm talking about and you see this like scar that's right here so back at the end of november I was washing out the inside of a wine glass. I had not even been drinking. I was just trying to do the nice thing and uh, take care of the dishes at the end of the night so that my husband didn't have to. Well, apparently I got a little enthusiastic with how I was wiping out the inside of the wine glass and hit a weak spot in it and it just broke and like gouged my knuckle right here. So I had thought it had healed up okay, and then it started to hurt again at the beginning of the year, so like a couple of months after it happened. So I went to the doctor who referred me to a hand specialist, that's a thing. <laughs> uh, they did some x-rays, they didn't see any glass in my hand or anything like that, and unfortunately an x-ray won't tell you if there's any kind of like damage to the ligaments or anything but the doctor had said he's like hand injuries like this can take up to four months to heal so he's like we can either do an MRI right now or we can depending on your pain level <laughs> um, we can if you're okay with it, we can wait until we hit that four month mark and if it hasn't healed then do the MRI and I said, well, I'm okay with, you know, with waiting. And we can see if you're saying it takes up to four months to heal, that's, you know, I, we can give it some more time. I'm not feeling a huge crunch. I am a little bit concerned just because this is like, this is my dominant hand. This is my index finger. Like I really need there not to be long lasting damage to that especially because I play piano by tra by trade and by, um, well, just for enjoyment um, when I'm not a stay-at-home mom. <laughs> so I really need to not have like an ongoing like lingering problem with that finger. But it's been, 
it seemed to be getting better for a little while after I saw the hand doctor and now the past couple of days it's been hurting again so we'll see I'm at the three month mark now and <sighs> I'll give it a little more time. If it continues to get worse, I will probably go ahead and call the doctor um, and not wait till we hit the four month mark, but we'll see. But I just, I notice it, especially when I try, when I have to like grip something. Don't make that joke. I, Steph, if you're listening, I know exactly what you're saying right now. <laughs> um, when I'm like opening a water bottle or when I have to lift up my 35 pound toddler and his weight is resting, you know, on my hands in that spot. So we'll see. We'll see. I'm nervous. I I don't know if it's the kind of thing that'll be like physical therapy or surgery or who knows. I mean, I guess that's what an MRI is going to tell us if I have an MRI. Did I drop a drill? Did a drill fall off my multiplacer? <laughs> and just land perfectly. I don't know. It's all <laughs> shades of the same like muted tones. No one will notice if I did. Okay, let's keep going. So other, other, and happy news. My mom was able to get in for her first COVID vaccine and promptly booked a flight to come out here for like two weeks after she gets her second <laughs> second shot so she literally came out of retirement sort of sort of came out of retirement so that she'd have access to a vaccine sooner so that she could come out and see us <laughs> so she's fine she really kind of wanted to start back with a little bit of work anyway but no like 100 percent, her main motivation is to be able to fly out to see us and to see my brother who lives up in Portland, Oregon. So I am extremely, extremely happy, like want to cry happy that I'm finally going to get to see her again. I haven't seen her since October. We live across the country from one another and we're used to getting to see each other like every two to three months. So this is a long one. You guys have heard me talk about it a lot, but I have a lot of new subscribers <laughs> regularly, so I just recap from time to time. Um, something cute that has come out of this, though, is that she has started um, in her retirement and, you know, lockdown boredom. She's gotten back into making cards and like stamping, which I don't know if any of you are um, multi craftual and uh, maybe are also card makers, but she's gotten back into that and has started sending cards to the kids. And Micah is too young to have any kind of appreciation for it besides me just handing him the stickers she sends and he sticks them all over our house, which is fine. They're the puffy stickers that just you could pop right back off. But Connor is super tickled because she is doing what my grandma did for me as a kid and that I remember and look back on so fondly, which is that my grandma on my dad's side would send me a card i'm not sure how often it was but she would send me a card with a note and a stick of gum and again i so distinctly remember that and have the fondest associations with it i mentioned it to my mom and she's like well is it okay if i send connor um a, you know gum and, I, and obviously mike goes too young for it and I said, he would probably love that. And I, again, I'm getting a little teary about it. Um, I just, I loved that because we lived, we always lived at least two and a half hours from our extended family, from like my grandparents. So having that connection with them as a young child was really special. So I love that my mom is getting to still have that with her grandkids, even though she's not getting to see them as often as we're all used to. But here's the really funny part, because this, this is Connor in a nutshell here. So 
the first time she sent a card, she just sent one card for both boys. And the card that she sent for both kids had two sticks of gum in it and two strips of stickers. Because she said, I didn't know if you wanted to try to give Mike any gum. She's like, I just don't know like what phase he's at. And I was like, no, he's got still got kind of a like gag reflex. I don't really want to give him gum. She's like, that's fine. So I gave it to Connor instead. Um, and Connor's very tickled. They got two pieces of gum. The following week, my mom sent one card for each of the kids. And Connor's card had a stick of gum in it and a you know strip of stickers. And Micah's just had the stickers. But because my child is his mother's son and notices every little detail and remembers every little thing, literally the first time we are on the phone with my mom, after he gets the second card, he says, just dead serious. Now he's five. He's going to be six in May. Um, just dead serious too. He's like, grandma. She's like, yes, Connor. You sent me a card this, you know, today and it had one gum. My last card had two gums and we just died laughing it <laughs> because he was so stone faced like, you think I didn't notice that you didn't send me <laughs> two gums. I love that he doesn't say like pieces of gum. He's like two gums, <laughs> one gum. <laughs> I am just cracking up and my mom is just, she's laughing hysterically. We're like, you can't get anything past this kid. <laughs> he is always verifying and checking everything. Again, I hear I was very much like this at his age. So at least he comes by it, honestly. But you best believe she sends two sticks of gum in his cards now. <laughs> oh, and I know, I know that this is totally like a battle that we could have fought if we wanted to like teach a lesson about like, well, you know, sometimes things look different than you expect. And just because you ask for something like doesn't mean you're going to get it. And it's important when someone gives you something that we are grateful for what they've chosen to give us and that we don't look for more, you know, all of those life lessons. But you guys, he's five and a half years old. He lives across the country from his grandma. We're all missing each other after almost a year of lockdown and life looking so different than we all expected. Like, please forgive me if I'm not going to use this as an opportunity to teach my child like a life lesson I can teach him another time. <laughs> I'm gonna let his grandma be indulgent and us be indulgent. Be like, he can have two pieces of, like, of gum. That's fine. <laughs> but uh, again, I just, I'm so tickled. Um, and I'm just grateful that we're finding these ways to connect, even though we're getting so much less time in person than we're used to. Um, but gosh, is anyone else just so ready to have a little bit of normalcy back? Um, yeah, me, <laughs> though I don't know. I kind of like this whole like staying in my house and not seeing a lot of people unless I choose to <laughs> FaceTime with them or text them. But anyway, I was going to tell you guys another kind of funny story of something that happened this week. So um, yesterday I got a package in the mail um, from Diamond Drills USA. Uh, they sell just drills like spare drills it's a really good website to go to they have an etsy shop and a website um if you need like extra drills for a project or whatever i've actually never personally ordered from them before so i got a package from them yesterday and opened it up and it had a few packs of those white square drills that i've talked about how i was missing from my snow deer kit from diamond art club and there was a whole thing with their process of um, 
sending out replacement drills for that. It was just, it was a whole thing, which the poster, I did film like a quick post review for that kit. I'll try to put that up this week. Anyway, so here's the thing. The past, the first two times that Diamond Art Club sent me those drills, they just sent them like from their factory and they came in just like an envelope that said it was from Diamond Art Club. Um, so when I got these drills from Diamond Drills USA and there was like a Etsy gift receipt inside the package and it was like, enjoy your gift, signed Chao, like C-H-A-O. And I was like, who, who sent me drills? Like I can count on one hand, literally one hand, the number of people in the diamond painting community that have my address, unless they're a, you know, a small shop owner or something. So I immediately assumed like, well, did one of my, you know, one of my close friends like <laughs> that has my address, send these to me and just sign it with like a funny name. And I asked around and no one, everyone was like, no, we didn't, <laughs> we didn't send, we didn't send you those. <laughs> we knew Diamond Art Club was. Um, and then I started to panic just a little bit where I was like, who, who has my personal address? Um, and then I thought, well, there's, I've bought from a lot of small shops in the diamond painting community. So I thought, I guess there could be some overlap where if there's a small shop owner that happens to like follow me on Instagram and has seen me talk about missing these drills so much, Maybe they pulled my address and sent me something. So I messaged a couple of like those people that I knew on Instagram and they were like, no, that wasn't us. So finally I sent a message to Diamond Drills USA on Etsy and I said, I know this is probably really strange, but I don't know who sent these to me. And I am concerned that someone has my personal address. And I just, I wonder, I know you probably can't share a lot because of this other person's privacy, but is there anything that you can tell me? And she responded back pretty quickly and she was like, oh yeah, that's Diamond Art Club. <laughs> and she's like, this is the email address for um, their person there that uh, I guess they often will, I guess, contact Diamond Drills USA and send people replacements through them. I have no idea what was different about this time than the first two times where they came from Diamond Art Club's warehouse, but I was very relieved to hear that some random person hadn't managed to find my personal address. Here's the reason that I didn't even think at first that it might be Diamond Art Club is because this is gonna sound wrong. <laughs> I've talked a lot with their customer service for any number of reasons. I'm not, I'm not a Karen. I just, it's everything from like, yeah, can you cancel that? <laughs> this kit, like I just, I didn't need to order that many or just questions or just like really general feedback, any, any number of things, like not complaints, you know? And not once have I encountered someone with this name. Um, and so that's why I thought it couldn't be Diamond Art Club. So I was like, well, I am on a first name basis with all of their customer service people. So, and who, who else would have taken care of this but customer service? Well, apparently someone named Chow, whose name I might be mispronouncing and I apologize. So now I know the name of someone else that works at Diamond Art Club. <laughs> But I thought that was, I don't know. Now you know if you get an order, if you request replacement drills from Diamond Art Club and they come from Diamond Drills USA, now you know that that is above board. And that's a thing that they do. <laughs> so as far as things that are coming up this week, um, I know that... We're hoping to maybe have some more information and thoughts to share about the potential event soon. The event itself is most likely not happening until summer because that's just a slightly less busy time for us. Um, and that also gives us time to really prep and plan because neither of us are fly by the seat of our pants people. We're very much planners, hence why we've literally been in these early brainstorming um, 
in this early brainstorming phase for like two months. <laughs> we're having fun though. Like that's, we're having so much fun with it. I'm really, really, really excited. And again, a gentle reminder to let me know if you would be interested in an event that was sort of centered around fine arts, old masters, customs, royalty free artwork that's like both an educational sort of series and then also an opportunity to participate in an event with like prizes and stuff like that. So just a reminder, please share your thoughts on that. Even if it's not your thing, that's fine. Totally fine. <laughs> uh, this week I am planning to film probably not tonight because I'm really I'm kind of tired, but <laughs> I'd like to film my month in review for the month of February where I sort of recap my finishes and my works in progress and milestones and whatnot. So I want to film that to share with you guys. I have a couple of videos sort of just sitting in my queue that still need to be edited together. And I just am not sure what the timing should be on sharing those. I have my post review of Snow Deer. Um, I have an order that I had unboxed from Dragons and Beasties. Um, it's a really, really adorable Instagram account. They had a mystery box that released and that video hasn't gone up yet, even though I filmed it two weeks, two weeks ago. Um, because since it was a mystery box, they actually asked people not to post reveals for a couple of weeks after receiving them because they didn't want others to inadvertently have it spoiled for them, which I totally understand. <laughs> so I have that coming. I have a Simply Gilded order coming that is not a subscription box. And I'm excited to get that and share it with you guys. I have a Diamond Art Club order coming. I just have, there's probably gonna be some unboxings this week. Um, but am I live tomorrow? I'm excited. I hope that I hope that there will be some some of you guys there so we can chat and hang out a little bit. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm excited to be kicking off the month of March. I have hopefully a lot of really fun and exciting things coming down the pike to share with you guys. And as always, please know that you are more than welcome to share thoughts and feedback in the comments. I have had requests for some different videos in particular, and I'm hoping I am keeping track. I have a notebook where I <laughs> make lists of things like ideas that you guys have shared. Um, some of those I'm hoping to get to soon. Uh, curiosity, if you're still here and listening, would you be interested in a stash video? And I mean, like my diamond painting stash, <laughs> because I feel like I want to go through and pick out some kits to de-stash. And if I'm going to be doing that, I could almost go ahead and use it as a chance to share what's in my stash. Is that something you guys would be interested in? Or is that kind of, does that kind of make you go, mm, that's weird. <laughs> uh, feel free to let me know that in the comments. Um, but yeah, I think I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up here for you guys. Cause we've been chatting for a while. Um, but I hope that you all are having a really wonderful start to your week so far. Thank you for listening slash watching, <laughs> especially to all of my rambles and kind of my tangents. I know it was maybe a little tricky to follow tonight, but hopefully, you know, hopefully you still had a good time. <laughs> but I really, really hope that you have an absolutely wonderful week. If you are not already subscribed and you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing and also giving it a thumbs up before you click away. Um, and as always, leave questions, comments, concerns, and feedback on all of the things <laughs> in the comments. And I always read and try to respond to um, as many as I can. So anyway, I will talk to you guys again soon. Have a really wonderful week. And yeah, I'll talk to you again soon. Bye.